Hey, what's going on guys? I am Joe Alvarez and today let's talk about the power of gain staging. It's a very mysterious topic, but I guarantee you if you can get this concept down, it will transform your mixes forever. So what is gain staging? I'm glad you asked. So gain staging is how loud or how soft a signal is going into a preamp an analog equipment or a DAW or a plug-in chain. So you may ask, why do I need to know about gain staging? Aren't DAWs all digital? In that regard, you are right. DAWs are digital. However, if you're using emulations of plugins that emulate analog hardware, they do follow the algorithm of an analog piece of equipment, hence why you need to learn gain staging. It's also good to know gain staging because you wanna know how hard you're hitting your preamps, how hard you're hitting audio equipment that you may be using to go into your DAW. So if you can master that, you are way better off. So essentially, one way to think about it is when you're recording either your voice, an instrument, the signal needs to be controlled. This control is called gain or trim. They use it interchangeably, but they basically mean the same thing is how loud that signal is gonna enter your plug-in chain, your DAW, and affect everything else after that. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why do I need to gain stage when we have a volume fader in most DAWs, right? And you're right, you do have a volume fader, but the volume fader controls the output of the signals leaving your DAW, leaving your audio equipment. So it doesn't matter what went in in regards to the signal of that audio, if that signal was distorted, if it was recorded the right way, all the volume is gonna do is turn up how loud and how soft you hear it. It only affects your ears. All right, so now let's talk about the importance of gain staging. You wanna optimize your volume, your input signal throughout the chain of command. So as I'm going in through a microphone, in through a preamp, into my DAW, into my plugins, that's essentially your chain of command, your audio chain, your plug-in chain, different uh, terms, but essentially they mean the same thing. And the reason you wanna optimize this level is because if you're using plugins that use analog emulations, they're gonna emulate those hardware sweet spots. And those sweet spots are measured in something called a DBU, decibel unit. And what essentially that does, it measures the voltage, the amplification of that signal. So you always wanna be at zero dBU when you're hitting those analog emulations. And the reason you wanna hit that sweet spot is because those pieces of equipment, those plugins that emulate those hardware units optimally perform when you hit zero dBU. So you're gonna get the best characteristics, the best sounding EQs, the best sounding distortions, etc. if those plugins are emulated after analog hardware. Okay, so now to help you better understand this concept, we have to go back to the 1930s. In the 30s, the audio revolution was taking place. This was the first time that someone's voice was able to travel through different forms of amplification via the telephone, video signals, and movies. Hence, these three main industries needed a way to standardize this process. Up until then, they didn't have a way to standardize the way audio signals and audio levels were transmitted. So levels were all over the place. So they all got together and said, hey, we need to create something to standardize these levels across all these different platforms. And hence, in 1940, the VU meter was born. Voltage unit, it measured the voltage, the amplification, of how the signal was traveling through those pieces of equipment and into your ears. Okay, so now I know I've been nerding out a little bit, but let's now go into our DAW and look at how all this works. I'm gonna discuss the difference between a DBU, a DBFS, and all that stuff, and how to actually set up a gain stage chain so your signal can sound the best that it can sound. Let's go. Okay, so now we're in the DAW and let's take a look at exactly what I meant by using the VU meter in order to gain stage our mix so we can get a nice optimal level. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a VU meter 
right into my master bus, my stereo out bus. And what that's gonna do is gonna allow me to set all my levels in this mix so I can hit zero. So zero dB U is roughly translated to about minus 18 dB FS, which these meters right here are. And so all that is is a digital meter and how the DAW reads the signal coming in to this input and this output. So I won't get too, too technical with the description of front side meters versus VU meters, but just know that this covers the average volume, the average voltage amplification of a signal, whereas the front side bus, this meter over here, covers mostly the peak of a signal. So it's better to use the VU meters when you're first trying to get a nice clean balance so you know that those signals are gonna hit your analog plug-in chain in a very nice sweet spot type of way. Again, what we spoke about was zero dBU. So what I do now that Logic has implemented a gain stage button right here, a gain stage tool, is you can command A and then you just pull everything up or down accordingly. But what I like to do in order to get my VU meters quickly at zero is I like to mute everything except for the kick and the snare and then try to balance my kick and the snare to zero. So we can go a little higher. So again, you can do it here with the gain tool, but I like to do it here in the reason section just because I can see a lot easier the dB measurement as here is kind of, I feel like it moves too quick. So I much rather do it here where it's a little more precise. Cool, so I'm about one and zero, uh, between one and zero, and that's good for me. And that's what that's gonna allow me is to really measure the gain of everything else in accordance to what the loudest part of my track is, which is the kick and the snare, and then my vocals. So let's go to the mixer real quick, and you can see that my mixer is essentially at what they call unity. So everything is at zero in the digital scale. Everything's gonna be at zero in the VU scale. So a good way to think about that is everything right now is going to be at zero on these meters, but in the VU meters, if you were going to measure it from the digital scale, it's going to be roughly translated to about minus 18 FS or minus 18 dB FS. And so what I like to do is just continue on and I slowly put in my elements. I usually like to start out with the drums and see what that sounds like and see if I'm still roughly around the VU meter here at zero because I know if that's going to happen, I'm going to be roughly at minus 6 dB front side on the digital scale. Well, translation, I'm be at that particular point once everything else comes in. So I have a few loud peaks over here, minus six, uh, minus four, but ultimately everything is around minus six. And what that's gonna do is allow me to have some headroom in the digital space, so then I can add some plugins into the whole mix, make things sound good, and still have some plugin, and still have some headroom space. All right, so now let's look at the VU meter to see what that's saying to us. Cool. So if I was to come here to the kick and snare track and let's say put a analog emulation of a compressor, let's use for logic's sake, let's just use the compressor from logic, use a stereo compressor and let's play that. You can see my signal, my input signal here is at a really healthy level. 
So if I want to go to the, emul the analog emulations here, now I can play with that and really get a nice sound. So let's make up that gain real quick. And when you make up the gain, you want to make sure that you are making up the gain in accordance to the output in accordance to what the input level was. Otherwise, it's going to sound louder and then you're going to think it's going to sound better. So this is before. And this is after. A little more punch, a little more weight. Sounds good. We can even put a little bit of distortion on this. So now those drums sound ever so present, a little more distorted and a little more weight to it. And you can see that we're still at zero on average for the VU meter here. And of course, sometimes we are gonna go up a little bit, but that's okay, because the average is still at zero. And what that's gonna allow me to do is now go into another plugin. Let's say I wanna go into the EQs from Logic, the Vintage EQ, and go to, let's say a console EQ. It's going to allow me to go in there at the perfect sweet spot level to get the most out of this EQ. Let's put up a little bit over here and a little bit low end. Again, we want to compensate for the EQ we just did. And we can keep going. Now we'll go to, let's say, some saturation, fab filter, saturation, a little Saturn 2. Let's go to saturation, gentle. And you can see the drums are starting to sound real nice, in your face, nice and crunchy, nothing's distorted, none, nothing here is peaking. And we look at the VU meter here and the digital meter over here and it's relatively still the same. So we're just going over minus six. And we're still relatively at the average of zero VU. We're essentially going over because the vocals need to be compressed a little more. We're kind of peaking with the delay effect that I use over here. But we can fix that later. Hopefully you see the power of understanding how to gain stage within the plugin uh, chain. So that when you're using these analog emulations, you're going into these emulations at the sweetest spot. And again, this process is just for the kick and the snare, but this translates throughout every track that you got in your mix. You want to stay relative to zero VU, and I like to minus uh, six dB front side bus or digital scale here on the DAW. So, so again, what you want to do is stay at zero VU, and I like to stay about minus six dB on the front side, AKA the digital scale here, the digital meters that you see on the next to the volume uh, faders. And if you do that, you can translate throughout your whole mix and everything is gonna stay within that analog chain of command when you're using those analog emulations.